this video, you're going to practice rearranging equations so that they are written in slope-intercept form, also known as getting y by itself, sometimes it's called y equals form, or writing it like a y equals mx plus b sentence. So let's get started. Take a look at the equation on the screen, y minus 2x equals 8. Is that equation written in y equals mx plus b form? No. No, it's not. And you, if you look carefully at the terms, you can see that the y is not by itself. In order to have y equals mx plus b, there needs to be an equal sign after the y. And you can never move an equal sign in math. It has to stay where it is. But you can move the other parts. So what we want to do is take this minus 2x and move it to the other side of the equal sign so it's over here with the b value. So in order to do that, we're going to use some inverse operations. So remember, the goal is to get y by itself, or isolate y, and how we're going to do it is using inverse operations, by either adding or subtracting a term or a constant or a variable, or multiplying or dividing by a coefficient. So let's get started with the easiest ones. This sentence here that we originally were looking at, let's fix it. So we're going to fix it by taking this minus 2x value and performing the inverse of it. So instead of minus 2x, we're going to add 2x. And we're going to do it to both sides of the equation. And now my y will be all alone because these additive inverses here would make a 0. So using this addition property of equality rewrites our sentence into y equals form, or slope-intercept form. Let's try it again. Do you see the item or the term that's out of order? It's this 5x here. So we want this positive 5x to disappear, and in order to do that, we need to subtract 5x from both sides. Now what's difficult for some students to understand is that over here, the 8 and the minus 5x, they're not like terms. They cannot be added together. So we're simply going to write them side by side. So when you can't do the math, you leave the math. And you have two options here. You can write the 8 first and the minus 5x second, or you can write the minus 5x first and the positive 8 second. But you'd have to remember to put that positive sign there yourself. Let's try another one. Remember, I want the y to stay where it is. So I want my positive 8x to go away. So in order to do that, I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides. Again, my y is isolated, but the math over here on the right cannot be combined. And you have two options for how you want to write it. If you can't do the math, you leave the math side by side. This is one correct answer. Or negative 8x and positive 3 is another correct answer. Don't write both. Choose the one that makes the most sense to you. All right, how about this one? It looks like the 3x is in the position I want it to be in, but this constant is in the wrong spot. So I want that 7 to be on the other side of the equal sign, and in order for it to switch sides, I need to use an inverse operation and switch its sign. So again, my y is isolated, and the math on this side cannot be combined. So if I can't do the math, I leave the math side by side. Remember, if something switches sides, it switches signs. That's an inverse operation. All right, let's try another one. This is the item I want to remove to the other side. So I'm going to use an inverse operation here. On this side, the additive inverse cancel out. But on the right side, these terms cannot be combined. If you can't do the math, you leave the math side by side. And now it's in slope-intercept form. All right, last one. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides, isolating y and rewriting the math on the right. If you can't do the math, you leave the math. Now, some teachers may want you to write the slope term first and the positive 5 second. So remember, if they want it in that order, that you might have to put that positive sign in there yourself one. This one 
is a subtraction problem. So I'm going to add as my inverse. So be careful that you're paying attention to the right type of inverse. And if you can't do the math, you leave the math. So what do you think you'd do for this one? Well, this 2 is adding to y, so we're going to subtract it. Again, if you can't combine the terms, you leave them side by side. All right, why don't you pause the video now and try these four questions and see how you do. Okay, did you pause the video? Let's take a look at the solutions. Now, let's take a look at some questions that are slightly different. Sometimes your y will have a coefficient. And if it does, that means you need to split the term by dividing every term. So this is different than switching sides and switching signs. This is different than using addition or subtraction as your inverse. So let's take a look at a problem that has a coefficient here. 2y equals 8x plus 6. Let's take a look at this example here. 2y equals 8x plus 6. So technically, my y, my equal sign, my mx, and my b are all correctly positioned, but my y is still not completely alone. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the division property of equality because 2 is multiplying at y, and the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So we're going to use the division property of equality here, and when we divide, we have to divide every single term. Not once on the left and once on the right, but every single term. And once I divide, I will have my slope-intercept equation. Let's take a look at a few more examples. All right, it appears as though my y is almost isolated here, but it still has a coefficient of timesing by 6. So I'm going to divide all three terms by 6, and that will leave me with 4x minus 3, and that's my slope-intercept equation. Next one. My coefficient is timesing by negative 4, so I'm going to divide all three items by negative 4. And be careful here, you're going to see some sign changes. So y is equal to negative 3x, and a negative 24 divided by a negative 4 is a positive 6. So watch your signs when you divide by a negative. Okay, well, one last time. Sometimes when you go to divide every term, it doesn't always divide evenly, like this one. So here's what's important about slope-intercept form. Slope is a ratio, and we want to keep it in fraction form. I don't want a decimal. I don't want a mixed number. So we want to keep that in fraction form. So if you can't do the math, leave the math. But over here, 15 divided by 3 is even. All right, I think you're ready to try a few on your own. Pause the video now and see how you do. All right, let's take a look at the answers. All right, pause in the video if you need a little more time to look it over. But now we're going to put those two methods together. What happens when y has a term on the wrong side and has a coefficient? So what I like to do first is get all my terms on the correct side. So I'm going to switch that minus 8x by subtracting it. Again, the order that I rewrite it doesn't matter, but I cannot do the math on the right-hand side. So I'm going to write it like this. And now I'm going to divide by my coefficient here. So my coefficient is 4. So I'm going to divide every single term by 4. And that gives me y equals 5 minus 2x. So I had to do both of those techniques. I had to use a subtraction property of equality and a division property of equality. Let's try another one. Let's see, I'm going to subtract 10x first. And this time, just to be different, I'm going to write my x term first, negative 10x, and my positive 14 last. Now I'm going to divide by my coefficient. I'm going to check my signs. y equals negative 5x plus 7. 
All right, one last time. Minus 24 on both sides. That almost isolates my y. And now I'm going to divide by 6. And like this happened before, if you cannot divide evenly, you leave the math as a fraction. Don't give me a mixed number and don't give me a decimal. All right, I think you're ready to try some on your own. I did put some challenges in, in here with these letters K and L, but pause the video and give it your best shot. All right, let's take a look and see how you did. All right, how do you feel about these last two at the bottom? They were kind of tricky. Now there's different ways to solve letter L, but I chose to um, move the X and the eight. You could have done it another way. Um, let me show you here, right here, right? This is the one I'm talking about. If you wanted to, you could have chosen a faster technique, and that would have been to just subtract four Y from both sides. And then I would have had my X and my constant all alone, almost from the beginning. Divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4, and I still get the same final answer. y equals negative 1 half x minus 2. All right, great job.